اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبحان کلا علم لنا اللہ ما علمتنا انکا انتا لیم الحکیم السلام علیکم دیئر سٹورنس ٹوڈے وی گونا ٹو دا نائنت لیکچر آف اپریٹنگ سسٹم ان دس لیکچر ویل سٹڈی اباؤٹ دا پروسس انکنائزیشن آف مور دن ٹو پروسسز ان دا پریویس لیکچر ویل ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا پروسس انکنائزیشن اور کریٹکل سیکشن پرابلم سلوشن فور ٹو پروسسز یوزنگ ڈکر اینڈ پیٹرسن الگوریتم and this video will discuss about critical section problem solution for more than two processes using Bakery algorithm. Uh, so previously discussed algorithms were to solve critical section problem for two processes. But in real multi-programming there can be multiple processes competing for some shared resource or uh, to enter for some uh, in, in some critical section. If the number of processes increases then it becomes difficult to solve this problem with the shared algorithms because they were confined to only two processes. That's why we propose new algorithm that can solve the critical section problem for more than one process for sorry for more than two processes. Uh, this algorithm is called Bakery algorithm. The reason for this name is that it is used in bakery shops. Uh, similarly in general stores and even in bank counters. Uh, what is the nature of the algorithm? The general idea is that each customer is given a ticket marked with a ticket number, right? Uh, the customer is to be served uh, next is the one with the least ticket number. Just like you may have uh, seen in uh, offices, in other office, in passport office, even in bank counters, that a ticket number is allotted to every customer and the, cust and the customer with the least number of ticket number is uh, served first. In bakery, <coughs> no two customers can have same ticket numbers. right? But in bakery algorithm, the possibility exists and we will have to break this possibility. In case when two processes get same ticket number, then the tie is broken by serving the process with the lower number. That is the process is assigned a fixed number in increasing order, just like P1, P2, P and P3. And if two processes say PI and PJ gets uh, get same ticket number, then if I is less than J, then PI will be selected, otherwise PJ will be selected. Uh, as I said that there exists a possibility that more than one process or two processes or more than two processes can get a same ticket number. For example, uh, five ticket number uh, <clears throat> has been received by two processes. Now how the tie will be broken? Uh, it will be decided upon first come first serve basis. The process which is uh, which has the least number because every process has an ID uh, just like P1, P2 and P3. So for example P2 and P3 both have ticket number 5. So the process with least number that is P2 will be selected first for execution and if uh, there, 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 there is a tie between P3 and P4 then P3 will be selected. <coughs> uh, the data structures they, they will be used commonly here are two. Uh, that is choosing an array and two arrays are used to run this algorithm. Choosing uh, this will be an array and number this will be yet another array. Now let us discuss their specifications. So choosing is of type boolean. The type, the data type of the array choosing will be boolean. While number of type, uh, while number is of the uh, the number array, number array will have type integer. So this will be boolean. Choosing array will be boolean. That will be bool. Right. And similarly, the uh, number array will be of size uh, of type integer. So the data type of number array will be of integer data type and for choosing this type will be boolean. Both have equal size. Uh, what will be the size equal to the number of processes? What will be the size of these arrays? What will be the sizes of these arrays? So both of them will be uh, will have size equal to number of processes in the system. For example, there are n processes. So I'll write n. It can be number of threads in the system, right? So uh, this n shows that there exist n number of processes in the system. So both arrays will be declared first before uh, executing Bakery algorithm. Initially, the algorithm was developed for distributed environment, right? But can be used for centralized system with single CPU. 
the orig original uh, uh, the, uh, the original invention of this algorithm was for distributed processing but can be used for centralized system with only the single cpu now let's discuss the notations that will be used in this algorithm so the first notation notation is that for two order pairs a and b and c and d for example there are two order pairs then a b should be less than c d a b should be less than c d if uh, either a is less than c or a is less a is equal to c but b is less than d for example in these order pairs look at the first one uh, we'll have to compare the first uh, element of the first order pair with the first element of the second order pair so 3 will be compared with the 4 and you can see directly here that 3 is less than 4 so we'll decide that this order pair the first order pair is less than the second order pair and this become this becomes true because uh, we need not to find uh, to compare the second elements uh, uh, it meets the first condition that was used in, uh, for, for comparing two order pairs, right? In the second order pair, you can see here that uh, uh, 3 is less than 4. And if 3 is less than 4, then no matter what is the relationship between the second elements of the two order pairs, we will decide that this is also true. In the third case, we can see here that first element of the first order pair is equal to the first element of the second order pair. So in this case, we need to have we need, we need to compare the second two uh, elements. Uh, and in this case, you can see that 4 is less than 5. So we will also uh, say that this part is also true. For example, there were 2 and instead of 5 here, then the condition would not be true. And uh, you can see here that although 3 is equal to 3, but 4 is not less than 2. So this will become false. Right. And in the second notation that will be used in this algorithm is that is a maximum function. So maximum is a function or a list and it returns us the maximum value available in the in the list. For example, maximum of 2, 8, 3 and 4. If maximum function is used over this list, then it will return us 8. It means simply that it, it finds us the, uh, the, the largest element or the maximum element in the list. Now consider the actual algorithm that is Bakery algorithm and let's see the uh, pseudo code of Bakery algorithm. So this is the code for any process PI where I is the process number. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3 and up to so on. So I shows process number. PI and for PI uh, we have a do while loop. It just shows that as long as PI wants execution it should execute. Right, and in the do I loop, the first step is that uh, choosing at i is equal to true. So, in choosing array at i index, the value will be uh, true, and uh, number at i is equal to maximum of all the numbers that exist in number array. And sorry, here is plus one, and one will be added with that, and this value will be uh, assigned to number at i, right. Similarly, uh, then choosing at i will becomes false. Will become false. Similarly, internally we have another loop that is for loop for j equal to zero, j less than n, j plus plus while choosing at j and while number at j not equal to zero and number at j comma j less than number at i comma i then do nothing. So this is a uh, blocks stage in this stage processes are being blocked and once uh, a process uh, uh, a process evaluate all the other processes they are not willing to enter in the critical section and they are not in critical section then that process will enter in the critical section so this is basically the entry section right this is basically the entry section and once it and it leaves the end uh, the critical section it then reset the value at number i to zero and then it uh, enters in its remaining section initially when the system is loaded uh, so 
consider for five processes both choosing array and number array will be assigned choosing number will be assigned to all false values while number array will be assigned to all zeros just like here choosing array will become false 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 because there are five processes so size of choosing is five for five processes the five size array that's name is choosing will be uh, 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 will be made and uh, all those uh, entries will become false and similarly number array of size 5 will be declared and will be initiated with all zeros right so this is how uh, the, the algorithm initializes and once a process wishes enter in the critical section or uh, to run the critical section then this situation is uh, obvious you can see here that p2 wants critical section if p2 wants critical section so in the first step choosing at i becomes true so choosing at 2 0 1 2 right this is 0 index this is a 1 index and this is 2 index so choosing at 2 become like here it was false so it will be uh, converted to true right again number at i is equal to maximum of numbers in in this array this uh, uh, number at 2 number array second index this value will be changed and this will be equal to the maximum number in this array but maximum number is this array is zero and plus this one okay so plus one will be equal to one plus one so this will become one and this one will be inserted in this slot and well once the process uh, uh, do this thing the process uh, co uh, completes this thing then it leaves uh, for this section for, for this uh, statement in which uh, choosing at i becomes false right here you can see that then loop will uh, run from uh, here this uh, the internal loop for loop that i j is equal to 0 j less than n and j plus plus so j loop will start from here it will go in this way this way this way and uh, similarly it will also go in this way this way this way and uh, it will have to find uh, a condition in which uh, uh, both these conditions become false and if both of them become false then it will leave this section and will enter the critical section let us see with, ex with an example now let us see with an example uh, for example we have five processes so initially an array of size 5 that's name is choosing will be declared and all values will be assigned to false similarly a number array will be uh, generated and every number uh, every uh, slot of the number array will be filled with a zero right so this is the initialization phase next for example we have uh, five processes uh, sorry uh, this is only four right so we have suppose uh, processes come in this order p0 comes first followed by p1 and p2 at the same time followed by p3 and followed by P4. So this is the order in which the processes are entering in the system. For example, P1 comes when, whenever P1 P1 comes, then choosing at i become true. So choosing at zero become true, right? Because it is zero number process P0. So choosing at zero become true. Similarly, uh, number at i become maximum in the array array and plus one. Sorry, uh, this one has been forgotten here. So number at i or number at zero right it means at this position this will be equal to uh, the maximum number in the array so the maximum number is zero uh, you can see here that all are zero and plus one so it will become one and you can see here that number at zero become becomes one right and now at this step in the second step choosing at i becomes false so this one that was true previously now becomes false and the third step here is a loop for j is equal to 0 j less than n and j plus plus so we start a j from here and here because both of these j's will co uh, will coordinate uh, uh, the uh, the two arrays that is choosing and 
number so in this step while while choosing at j while choosing at j is true but choosing at j is not true it is false so this condition uh, becomes false and if this condition becomes false then this uh, little semicolon at the end of the loop just states that this is a blocking loop and once it becomes false then the execution will proceed and another loop will be evaluated and this is the another loop that will be evaluated so while number 8j is not is equal to 0 as long as number 8j is not is equal to 0 but j is equal to j is at this position so number 8j is not is equal to 0 what's about condition the condition is true because it is 1 number 8j is not is equal to 0 this condition is true but because there is an end operation so we must have another condition to be true and that is number 8j comma j so number 8j is 1 you can see here that number 8j number 8j comma j and j is 0 right so number 8j is 1 number 8j is 1 comma j that is 0 should be less than uh, number 8i and now i shows just process number so number 80 because i is equal to 0 in this stage because process number 0 is executing pi so p0 uh, you can see here that it is pre p0 so for i we can use 0 so number 80 comma 0 number 80 is 1 and comma 0 is here so evaluate this condition whether this condition is true or false 10 is less than 10 no condition is false so even though the first part of the condition was true the end operation but the second part is false uh, you can compare that one although one is equal to one but we should have this zero be greater than this one which is not so the condition is false and if one of the conditions of end operation become false that means this whole step is false and once this whole step is false then the blocking state you can say here as a c here a semicolon uh, and uh, this is the bracket this bracket is the for the uh, for loop this one right so for bracket starts here and terminates here <coughs> Uh, if the condition is false then it will have to proceed and to where it will go it will have to return back to for loop all right and in the for loop j will be incremented so j will be incremented uh, let me clear this board for a while <coughs> okay so <clears throat> j will be j will be increased so j will move one step ahead in choosing array as well as in number array and once again while choosing at j while choosing at j you can see that choosing at j is not true it is false so it will proceed and it will proceed to next step to while loop uh, in the while loop you can see that while number 8j is not is equal to 0 but number 8j is 0 we uh, in this condition you you can see here that uh, uh, the uh, one of the condition is that number 8j is not is equal to 0 but number 8j is 0 if number 8j is 0 it means that one part of the end condition becomes false and once the one part becomes false then we need not evaluate the other part because it means that the condition is totally uh, false and if the condition is false then it will have to move back to for loop and it will have to increase the uh, j pointers that were previously at uh, one location now j of choosing moves to uh, two location and similarly j of uh, number will also move ahead similarly this j will proceed uh, uh, ahead and eventually it will reach the end because uh, you you can uh, uh, you, you can um, check it that uh, 
eventually this loop will terminate and j will reach to the last position because we had run this loop for j is equal to 0 to j less than n and now we have reached to j is equal to 4 and that is the end so this process p naught that was uh, uh, trying to enter in the critical section has uh, passed the test and now it has to enter in the critical section so in this way p naught will enter the critical section All right, so P naught is in critical section and for example at this particular junction we, re, uh, we receive two processes P1 and P2 simultaneously. So P1 and P2 once they come uh, what they do choosing at i is equal to true. So uh, these two values will become true. All right, and second what they will compu compute they will find the maximum in the array and add 1 with that so maximum in the array is 1 maximum in the array is 1 so process number 2 as well as 1 both will get 1 as a maximum value so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and both will insert 2's in their respect respective slots this is where I said in the earlier description that in Bakery algorithm two processes can get same ticket so you can see here that p1 and p2 they once they reach simultaneously to the system once they enter simultaneously to the system they receive a same ticket number that is two with them now in this step because they are executing simultaneously so they will uh, set their flags to off so uh, both trues once again will become false okay Now, uh, they will set their j's. For example, you can see here that uh, for j equal to 0, j less than n, j plus plus. And both of them will set their j's for p1 and p2. p1 and p2 both sets their, uh, both set their uh, uh, j's uh, or their pointers uh, to the uh, 0 location of the uh, arrays. <coughs> and now, they will proceed. So P1 is a currently at this location at this uh, particular slot and while choosing at J while choosing what is J for P1 0 while uh, choosing at J that is false so it will proceed ahead but at the same time P3 enters the system at the same time P3 enters the system you can see over here and uh, uh, P3 executes this statement and it turn this slot to be true right now p2 p1 moves one step ahead and wanna evaluate this condition while p2 evaluates this condition for p1 number at j is not is equal to zero and number at zero is not is equal to zero so number at j which is zero for p1 is not is equal to zero no yes this condition is true number at j is not is equal to 0 so this part of the condition becomes true but another part is this one and for that you can see that number at j comma j so number at j is 1 comma j that is 0 right because we are currently running on 0 j is less than number at i number at i means number at process number and process number is 1 so number at 1 and number at 1 is you can see over here 2 right so 2 and comma i i means process number that is 1 and now check whether this is true or false uh, 1 0 is less than 2 1 yes the condition is true so this condition is also true and this condition is also true it means that p1 is in trap p1 is in block state because semicolon shows that this process will stop here and this will end definitely checking these two conditions again and again and again and again until it founds it and uh, sorry until it finds its uh, valid <coughs> and p1 becomes blocked let me clear this board first Sorry, this one need not to be clear. All 
All right. Uh, now P3 proceeds to another step in which it uh, first finds the maximum number that exists in the array. And now you can see in this array, in number array, the maximum number is 2. So 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 uh, and 3 will be inserted in the uh, third location, 0, 1, 2 and third. So 3 is being uh, added at this value, uh, at this location, sorry. Now P2 proceeds and once pro P2 proceeds, then it will have to evaluate the two conditions. The first condition is that while number at j is not is equal to 0 and for P2 j is here. So you can see here that number at j, sorry, uh, number at j, okay, sorry, this part. Number at j is not is equal to 0. The condition is true. So this part of the condition becomes true. And uh, there is an operator and followed by this condition. This condition states that number at j comma j. So number at j is 1 comma j is 0 is less than number at i. Number at i it means that number at process number and process number is 2. So number at 2. Number at 2 is 2. Right? Comma i. I means process number 2. So this condition is also true. You can see here that both of the conditions become true. And if both of them are true, then it will once again fall in trap and P2 will also be in block state. At this time, P3 moves ahead and choosing at i is equal to false. Previously, it had set this pointer to true, but now it will become false. All right. And similarly, for P3, P3 will start at loop and it will set its pointers to be uh, at 0, 0, or 0 of choosing and 0, 0 of number. Right. And P3 will move ahead choosing at j. It is uh, true. It is false. Sorry, it is true. Uh, sorry, false. Choosing at j is not true. You can see that choosing at j and for j, for p, p3, j is here. So choosing at j is not true. Uh, so it will move ahead and will evaluate this, uh, this condition. For first condition, number at j is not is equal to 0. Number at j is not is equal to 0. Yes, this condition is true. So the first part of the condition becomes true. And uh, the next part is number at uh, j comma j is less than number at i comma i. So number at j is one. Number at zero is uh, number at zero. You can see here that number at zero is one comma j and j currently for p3 is zero. So zero less than number at i and i means process number. So number at three. Number at three. You can see here that number at three is three and comma. Uh, process number that is also 3 so, and this condition is also true so both of the conditions become true and once both of them are true then at this particular uh, uh, place p3 will also block p3 is uh, currently blocked it's because p0 is in critical section Now the current scenario of the system is that P1, P2 and P3, these three processes are waiting in busy wet loop and they are evaluating these two conditions again and again and P0 which was in critical section is currently running in critical section. For example, at this moment P0 leaves the critical section once it uh, uh, executes through the exact session of the critical section then number at i is set to 0 so number at i means number at 0 right because i is 0 p naught means p0 so process number 0 means that number at 0 should become uh, 0 so this uh, number is 0 now and once this number becomes 0 then because p1 p2 and p3 were busy in evaluating these two conditions then for example p2 was evaluating first this condition uh, p2 founds that this condition no longer exists because number at j means number at 0 
number at zero is not is equal to zero but here you can see because the p naught has set it to zero so number at j is zero and this part of the condition becomes false once this part becomes false then no matter the other part is true or false we don't care about that because this there is an end operation between the two condition so p2 will move ahead and it will uh, recycle through the loop and will move ahead and also increase its uh, pointer of choosing and pointer of number right and uh, at this point for example p1 also realize that the condition uh, no longer exists uh, because number at j is no longer equal to uh, and is, is 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 no longer not equal to zero so this condition is also uh, becomes false for p1 and p1 also moves ahead similarly p3 also notice that and it also moves uh, one step ahead now p2 proceeds uh, and it sits at uh, it, it check that whether choosing at j is true but choosing at j is not true you can see here that choosing at j is not true so it will not wait there and it will move one step ahead and you can see that p1 and p3 has also moved their indices one step ahead so p2 will move ahead uh, and it will evaluate these two condition the first condition is that number at j should not be equal to 0 and this condition is true. The second condition is that number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i. So number at j is 2 because number at 2 is 2 right. Number at 2 is 2 and comma j, j is uh, 1 for, uh, for p 2 j is 1 right. Uh, so 2 1 is less than 2 2 yes because 2 and 2 are equal but 1 is less than 2 so the condition is true so uh, both these parts this part as well as this part becomes true when uh, if both of them are true it means that p2 will fall once again in trap and will uh, once again fall in busy wet and p2 will be waiting here P not exit the critical section yeah, and now it is in remainder section. So this is the current scenario. Now suppose P1 moves ahead but at this very moment P4 also enters the system and P4 enters the system but P1 is here and P1 is checking both the condition that while number at j is not is equal to 0. So number at j is not is equal to 0 this condition is true this part of the condition is true and the second condition is that number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i so j uh, j for uh, p1 is j for p1 is 1 all right so number at j means number at 1 number at 1 is 2 comma j that is 1 so this will be replaced with 1 okay so number at j comma j should be less than number at i and i is the process number number at i number at 1 number at 1 is 2 right comma i and i is 1 so 2 1 is less than 2 1 no this part of the condition becomes false once this part of the condition becomes false then it means that p will uh, p1 will have to continue its journey and now p1 moves uh, once again to another step at the same time it also increases its pointers and they, they, are, they are now at uh, uh, 0 1 2 they are now at end this 2 and before executed once before is executed it sets its flag to true similarly p3 proceeds and once p3 proceeds it will have to evaluate the two conditions so you can see that number at j should not be equal to 0 
सो नंबर एट जे फॉर पी थ्री जे इज वन सो नंबर एट जे इज नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज ट्रू फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द कंडीशन इज ट्रू फॉर पी थ्री बट फॉर सेकेंड पार्ट नंबर एट जे कॉमा जे शुड बी लेस देन नंबर एट आई कॉमा आई सो नंबर एट जे कॉमा जे मीन्स नंबर एट टू कॉमा टू सो नंबर एट टू इज बिकॉज जे इज वन सॉरी नंबर एट वन कामा वन सो नंबर एट वन कामा वन शुड बी लेस देन नंबर एट थ्री कामा थ्री दैट इज थ्री एंड थ्री सो टू वन इज लेस देन थ्री ओ थ्री सिमिलरली P3, uh, this part of the condition also becomes true for P3, and now P3 is in waiting state. P4 moves one step ahead and calculates its maximum value from the array, uh, that is three, and add one with that, and it becomes four, and uh, assign it to the index of the uh, numbering number array. Now P3 is in block state. Uh, P2 is in block state. P1 is executing to this these steps, so, and P4 is at this step, while P0 is in remainder section of the uh, code. Now P1 proceeds here, and pros, uh, P1 checks that number at J is not is equal to zero. So for P1, J is at here. So number at J is not is equal to zero. The condition is true. First part of the condition is true. Now for second part, number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i. Number at j is two because j is two, and less should be less than number at uh, i comma i. So number at i is two, and comma i i means process number, and that is one. So two two should be less than two one. The condition becomes false. So this part of the condition is now false. and if this is false it means that p will have to continue its journey so p will have to once again visit the loop but at that moment p4 uh, moves ahead and choosing at i becomes false you can see here that this part becomes false all right now p1 will have to move ahead you can see here that p1 moves ahead it also increases its uh, indices of you know, choosing a number and then it comes over here and once again evaluates the, uh, evaluates the condition so number at j should not be equal to 0 because j is here so number at j is not equal to 0 the first part is true and for the second part number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i so 3 3 should be less than 2 1 which is false so once again this condition becomes false it means that p1 should proceed it will not fall in trap and will not be in busy wait right so p1 proceeds and it also increases its pointers of choosing a number and once again it moves ahead to find these two conditions whether any of them is false so first it will have to evaluate that choosing at i shouldn't be for, uh, zero and you can see that choosing at i j is not zero so the first part of the condition is okay but in the next part you can see that number at j comma j it means that number at 4 comma 4 so 4 4 less than number at i comma i 2 2 this is also false so this of the condition is false it means that p1 has to proceed but p1 should it go ahead next step to the loop it will proceed in the critical section because the indices of p1 that were g or j or here and here they have reached to the last indices and now p1 will have to enter in the critical section in this way p1 is now in critical section p4 is executing here and p2 and p3 are blocked and busy wait state now p1 because p1 was in uh, as in critical section so we have removed that from an uh, uh, indices and p4 has been entered in the loop in this loop so for p4 indices have been set and now it will have uh, move its indices from j is equal to 0 to n so both indices of for p4 are now at 0 and for p2 and p3 both are at index indices 1 
for both choosing and number right now suppose p4 proceeds once p4 proceeds and it uh, evaluate the number at j is not is equal to 0 number at j shouldn't be equal to 0 but once it uh, evaluate this condition then it finds that uh, it is 0 so the first part of the condition becomes false once this part becomes false then what it will have to do it will have to carry on it needs it, it needs not check the second part of the condition because they are connected with an operator and it will move ahead once again it will increment its pointers of j's and once again it will move ahead and evaluate the conditions and you can find that first part of the condition is true now number at uh, i should not be equal to zero so number uh, sorry number at j is should not be equal to zero and here you can see that number at j is not equal to zero the second part uh, number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i 2 comma 1 should be less than 4 comma 4 and you can check here that this condition is also true so if both of the conditions are true it means that p4 should be blocked over here and uh, currently p1 is in critical section p0 is in remainder section p2 3 and 4 are in block or busy web stats once p1 move ahead P1 moves ahead and it set P number at i equal to 0. It means that number at 1 equal to 0, right? This is number at 1. This should be set to 0. So you can see here that this number has, is now 0. And because P2, P3 and P4 were waiting in this step and they were constantly evaluating these two conditions, for example, at this point, P3 finds that number at j not equal to 0, this condition is doesn't hold. Why? Because number at j means number at 0, uh, number at 1, and number at 1 shouldn't be equal to 0, but it is 0. It means that the condition is false, and if one part is false, then it will have to proceed. Then it will proceed, P3 will go ahead, and it will move its pointers one step ahead. Alright? Uh, at this point, for example, uh, P3 uh, moves ahead and it evaluates again this condition that uh, number at J shouldn't be equal to 0. So, because the J of P3 is currently uh, at this location, so uh, number at J should not be equal to 0. So, the first part of the condition is true. And for the second part, number at J, comma J means number at 2, comma 2. So number at 2 comma 2, number at 2 is 2 and 2 comma 2 should be less than number at i comma i. So number at 3 comma 3, number at 3 is 3 and i is also 3. So 3, 3, 2, 2 should be less than 3, 3. Yes, the condition is true. So both of the conditions are true and that is why P3 has been blocked once again while at this moment P4 wakes up, it moves ahead, uh, P2 and P4 simultaneously. P1 is in now remainder section, P4 proceeds uh, and pro P4 also increases its uh, indices and now they are in at uh, indices 2 but once P4 moves ahead and it evaluates the conditions then number at J should not be 0 so number at J are not 0 the condition for uh, the first part of the condition is true for the second part number at uh, J comma J should be less than number at I comma I so 2 to 2 should be less than uh, 4 and 4 this part is also true if both of the parts of the condition are true it means that for P4 will have to be blocked or will fall in a trap and a busy weird state and now P2 will have to proceed, P2 moves ahead, it uh, increases its pointers and uh, then it evaluates the condition that number at j shouldn't be 0, number at j shouldn't be 0, you can see that uh, 2 is not equal to 0, the first part of condition is true, for the second part, number of j comma j should be less than number at i comma i. So 2 and 2 should be less than 2 and 2. No, the condition is false. So if one part of the condition is false, it means that P2 will have to proceed. And P2 proceeded and it also increased its pointers to the next level. Right? And once again, 
it has to evaluate the two condition that number at j shouldn't be equal to zero. So number at j, you can see here that not equal to zero. The first part is valid. For the second part, number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i. So three and three comma should be, uh, should be less than two and two. This is false. It means that condition is false. So P P2 will have to proceed. P2 moves ahead and also it increases its pointers to the next level but now it is the last level of the loop so once p2 uh, move ahead moves ahead and it uh, evaluates the two condition that number at j shouldn't be equal to zero so number at j is not equal to zero the first part is valid for the second part number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i so number at j comma j is 4 and number at i comma i is uh, 2 so you can see here that 4 4 less than 2 2 the condition is false so if the condition is false then p2 will have to move ahead but for the final test i am not proceeding again ahead to the loop and p2 should enter the critical section at, at this juncture you can see that p2 is in critical section p0 and p1 in order fashion are in remainder section p3 and p4 are in busy vat and block state so this is the current scenario all right suppose p2 also exit the critical section it has to set the number at i means number at 2 to 0 so number at 2 to 0 has been uh, set here you can see that and uh, once the number has been set to 0 then because p3 and p4 were constantly watching these two conditions and they were in wait that whenever uh, any of these conditions should become false and for example p4 noticed that number at j is not is equal to 0 this condition doesn't hold because for p4 for p4 j is at this position and you can see that number at j shouldn't be equal to 0 but it is 0 it means that this false uh, this uh, part of the condition doesn't satisfy and once it doesn't it doesn't satisfy it means that whether this this part satisfy satisfies or not it will have to proceed and now at this point p3 also realized that the condition no longer holds and p4 proceeds it incremented its counters and you can see that j of choosing and j of number both have been increased and p4 moves ahead and once again it has to evaluate the conditions and the conditions are that that number at j shouldn't be equal to zero so number uh, at j shouldn't be equal to zero and this condition is true so the first part of condition for p4 is true for for the second part number at j comma j should be less than at number number of i comma i so 3 and 3 should be less than 4 and 4 the condition is true so both of uh, both of the conditions are true for p4 that is why p4 will once again fall in busy wet state and it will be blocked but p3 will have to proceed because previously it had detected for uh, for p3 j stands uh, here now p3 moves its pointers ahead and it uh, goes ahead and once again it has to check the uh, conditions the first condition that will be checked is that that number at j shouldn't be equal to zero and it finds that number at j is not equal to zero so the first part of the condition is true for p3 <coughs> but for the second part number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i so number of j comma j in it uh, it means that 3 comma 3 should be less than 3 comma 3 and this part of the condition is false it means that p3 has to proceed and because there exists limit on the j so p3 will move ahead it will have to uh, increment its pointers the pointers will move ahead both for choosing a number and p3 will go ahead and again it will have to uh, to evaluate the condition that number at j shouldn't be equal to zero so number of j uh, number at j is not equal to zero the condition is true first part is true but for the second part you can see here that 4 4 should be less than 3 3 this part of the condition is false and if this part of the condition is false it means that whole of the condition is false it will have to uh, leave the while loop it will have to exit the while loop and it will not repeat uh, uh, at this point but it will have to proceed to the critical section and now you can see that p4 uh, p3 enters the critical section 
All right, so P3 is in critical section, P2 is leaving the critical section. Uh, similarly, P0 and P1 are in remainder section and P4 is in busy wet state. Now suppose P3 also moves ahead and uh, it has to set P at um, number at I to be 0. So number at I means uh, number at 3 because it is process number 3. So I equal to 3. So this value will be set to 0. You can see over here that uh, this value has now been set to 0. Alright, if uh, this value uh, set to uh, 0, then P4 which was constantly warning the values and which was cost constantly watching this value found that uh, finds that number at j shouldn't be equal to 0 so number at j is equal to 0 so the first part of the condition becomes false if this part of the condition becomes false it means that we need not evaluate the second part and, and automatically decides that the whole part is false and all right p4 will wax up and it will have to move its pointers ahead both pointers have been moved ahead and uh, uh, now it proceeds and it checks whether number at j is not equal to 0 so number at j is not equal to 0 the condition is true but for the second part you can see that number at j comma j should be less than number at i comma i so 4 and 4 should be less than 4 and 4 this part of the condition is false and if this part of the condition is false it will have to exit the loop and it will have to reach it over there uh, far loop but far loop has already reached to the limit that is j has been reached to the final level so it will have to proceed to the critical section and now p4 enters the critical section and eventually from the critical section when it exit when it exit then uh, p4 finally uh, uh, exit the critical section and sets the value at number uh, 4 to 0 and uh, you can see over here that the uh, final sequence that is generated by the Bakery algorithm is that P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4. So five processes uh, have been managed in this way. You can also uh, run it on multiple processes but this is how actually the Bakery algorithm works. And you can also evaluate that Bakery algorithm satisfies all three conditions that are uh, the progress condition, the mutual exclusion condition and the bounded weight condition. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.